coming up on Theatre Talk. <laughs> like my mother and my father, I enjoy a healthy meal. Yes, my outside's soft and flabby, but my inside's made of steel. We raise piggies in the backyard, then I eat them limb from limb. We will leave our dachshund all alone with him. <laughs> Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. <laughs> City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Good night. That's it. My feet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, Michael Riedel. Saw that coming. <laughs> Of Frankie Campbell's funeral home, apparently. <laughs> uh, welcome to Theater Talk, and we are joined by uh, two of our favorite guests of all time, Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman, who've been coming on the show, God, almost as long as we've been, well, since Hairspray. Yes. Then yeah. Catch Me If You Can. Yeah. And then, like, other times when we uh, well, guest just falls out it. and we need somebody to jump in. <laughs> Someone dropped out. <laughs> it's exactly. And with him is the great Broadway director, Jack O'Brien, who you've been on before. Yes. No. no the, oh, my God. No. This is a virgin? A premiere for Jack O'Brien on Theater Talk. I never made the cut. <laughs> You're in now. Okay. They are here because they are about to open on Broadway, or they have opened on Broadway, uh, Raoul Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, based on Dahl's novel, of course, and also the movie that I loved as a kid, the Brickus and Newley movie. But this is a brand new production, and it's got some terrific new songs by Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman. Thank you. Welcome, guys. Hi. It's good to Hi. be here. So, Jack, let me ask you, um, big production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory in London. For, yeah. Been running many years. Four. Why did you guys decide to do a completely new one? I think not, not to bring the one that was over there. The piece played in the Drury Lane. Which is enormous. Enormous. It's, I think it's the biggest theater in London. Yeah. And it was filled with extraordinary uh, sets and complexities, none of which would accommod be accommodated in any theater in New York, with the exception maybe of the Metropolitan Opera. <laughs> right, the old one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think they realized, and because of scheduling uh, conflicts, uh, uh, it was very very clear that the director wasn't going to be able to make it. Sam Mendy is the original director. Yeah, and he had other conflicts and couldn't come over. So they, I think they thought, maybe we should just start again fresh and see what happens if, you know, if we can tour it and, and move it around and get it to fit into Broadway. And how did you guys feel about going back to something that you had worked on for a number of years and then sort of pulling it apart? Oh, all yeah, over this again? had been eight years. But it ran for four <laughs> years in this giant theater, which is twice as big as any Broadway house. So it was really an eight-year eight year run. run. <laughs> so, well, what, what, was your response when, what was your response? When well, it, it, it had been long enough that, I mean, if they had said that to us a month after opening, we'd been like, what? <laughs> but it had been years, uh -huh. and we'd been going to see it with you know, new Willy Wonkas would come in, and so we would go, and, and we always saw the things that we wanted to tinker with that we had always meant to tinker with. Mm. And there just had been no time, the entire preview in, in it London. It was about getting an all elevator about. off the ground. So. And you know, the rest of the set, it was, yeah. it was that we never, ever even changed a word or tried this or dropped a verse or yeah. maybe wrote a new song. None of that. So it just naturally happened. And it was actually happening naturally with Sam and Peter in England over the years. We would talk about stuff. And a lot of the stuff that's new in the show was born out of discussions with Sam and Peter about what else can we do. But you just didn't get to. It, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We did a reading, and he saw how different enough it needed to be. Mm. And that was when Warner Brothers also said, we want to do it next year. Right. That we're, we're, we're putting our foot down, and schedule-wise, it didn't work. And he was the one who said, well, why don't you then get a fresh perspective? And how about like someone like Jack O'Brien? And we were like, well, okay, you'd why not? Success with Hairspray. <laughs> yes. Now, this yes. is something that interests me, because the sets have gotten so big on Broadway. And yeah. I think of you guys as, you know, old-fashioned songwriters in the good sense, that if you needed a new number to open the second act, you could go to the hotel room and knock it out in 20 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah. Do you find that? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I exaggerate. No, knock it out is exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> or knock it back. Yeah. <laughs> but do you find out as these sets get so big that 
that old ability you had to really shape a show or twist it around in previews is becoming more and more difficult. People find, get, fall in love with this stuff. And it, it, it concerns me a little bit because when, when anybody creatively gets nervous, they pile more stuff on it. Uh, they decorate it, they stuff it, they overproduce it. And it, sometimes it works. Sometimes you're just overwhelmed with production value and you go out sort of your eyes glazed and say, boy, I really saw a big show I got tonight. my money's worth. Exactly yeah. so. Yeah. And there is that thought because right. it's very expensive now. But the truth of the matter is that this piece is about imagination. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's about a child's imagination. Mm -hmm. So it's... A, so what we felt in initially was that we wanted to play with the idea of engaging the audience to play with us mm. on every sense of the word. Mm -hmm. Play in terms of comedy, play in terms of visuals. It's not like story theater, but it has the same effect yeah. of something you think you're seeing something you're not seeing. Well, we had written a song called It Must Be Believed to Be Seen, and which is really, and also many times in the show, Grandpa Joe will say to Charlie, uh, you and I make something out of nothing. Yeah, yeah. So the idea that, that imagination is a blank page in, in the back of the books. So that I found like the, uh, the, uh, like the really strong theme of the piece here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Is that no, a song cue? Yeah, I know. Oh, was, oh that, that was a good cue. song. Oh, that is a good song, yes. <laughs> so, Mar, can yes. you give us a little of it must be believed to, to be seen? seen? I can give you a little of it. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics come up because I'm old and tired of living now and I can't remember. They're old. So this is Willie's, um, his end of the first act, end of the first act when he's about to bring them in. Beyond this door's a factory Begun from just a bean Beyond this door surprises in store But it must be believed to be seen Beyond this door's invention Where mind meets with machine Beyond these gates astonishment waits But it must be believed to be seen Magic spells, no potions, for swear leger domain. My kingdom's created from notions, all swirling inside of my brain. Beyond this door's a banquet of Wonka made cuisine. A lucky few will get to pass through, but it must be believed to be seen. <laughs> All right. All right. When's the last time Legere Domain was I was going to say, how long did it take you to come up with that one, Legere Domain? I was so excited. When, that Actually, when we were writing lyrics, we made lists and lists of words. Wonka like that. words. Wonka And copy. eventually, I have to say, Scott. You know, the whole audience will just be like having a German Shepherd look on their face the whole show. If, if I every this, line, Sandra, is I'm not comparing myself to Sandra, but he says he has just a tiny Titian in a lyric, and we can't have Legere Domain. So I thought, well, I'll, you know, you have can it. squeeze it. <laughs> that melody, though, uh, which I like a lot, um, it's got the darkness yep. of yes. Roald Dahl. So I don't want people to think, because we get a lot of kiddie shows, I don't want people to think. I mean, it's for children, but it's also for adults. It's it's, it's old doll dark. world. Yes, he's very. not afraid to scare kids. Oh God! No, yeah. no, no, no. Well, but that's key. I mean, we know traditionally that all fairy tales that the kids really love are terrifying. Yeah, Ogres absolutely. and and people that eat you and yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. I was sitting behind bona fide children the other night, and at they one point, <laughs> there's, I, I've been accused of giving too much away on these shows. At one point, there was an incident. Where I was concerned that yes. the very young child oh, yes. would be yes. quite horrified, but guys, she you took it very happy about this. Right so, yes. <laughs> we, we haven't heard a single word of any <laughs> No one's complaining about it. Letters that oh, we did, absolutely. Really? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> looked to her. The squirrel belly. It's a giant squirrel. We don't want to get, we don't want to Oh, well, we can do that. Well, stuff happened to some Yes, but don't you think, though, I mean, kids today, they know what fear is. They know what being afraid is. But there's also something knowing you're going to be afraid, but you're in the theater, so you're kind of. There's afraid, and then there's good afraid. Well, what about these videos? Games. I mean, well, they're I mean, blowing they, people up uh, all yes, the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we have another. To it, I we think. have a, obviously a character, Mike TV, who lives inside. Yeah, those video absolutely. Games and yeah. So. Speaking of great imagination, you have a leading man with um, oh, Christian Borel, oh, fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, he was, fiery. Yeah. 
kind of. He should, or, I said he's part it. Danny Kay, Lawrence Olivier, and Bugs Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so wonderful to watch him because there's three little boys in the show who alternate the role of Charlie, and and he has to act with each one of them. And a lion's share of the show he does with the boy. I see them on stage. I'll be in the audience during a rehearsal, and he's giving them comedy advice, like wait for this and do that. And, mm -hmm. and then one of the kids says, you know, I want to pitch a joke here. And did. <laughs> a ten-year-old boy <laughs> pitched a joke with, and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about ownership. Yeah. Yeah. It's a funny thing about that. If you find yourself in the creative process yeah. saying yes a lot to the, to the collaborators, to the designers, to the cast, if you find this, this matrix of positive thought all feeding in, instead of saying, no, that's not going to work, don't do that, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. you say yes all the time. Suddenly you think to yourself, oh, this is really going in the right direction yeah. because it is the world's most collaborative art form. And then if you're a good director, a great director as you are, you know to say yes to the right things. Yes. There's that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, thing, the key is always, and because we've been on shows where it hasn't happened, where everyone sees, is seeing the same show. Mm -hmm. And that's right. so that's really the, when it's when it is that that's when it. It's very important because our old pal Peter Stone used to come on yes, the show. Yes, of course. Like, yeah. He said that hit shows are hit shows because everyone's on the same level. That's exactly right. They know right. the the idiom, the 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 style of the show. He said where you get into trouble is when people see it in different. That's yes. exactly yes. right. And there's nothing you can do if that happens, and those icebergs start to split apart. There's virtually almost nothing you can do. But. Conversely, if, they're, if everybody's going the right way, it, it's, it's a joy. It's really fun. Hairspray was like that. Yes, yeah. very much. I yeah. mean, we all, sort of, we all sort of felt that we were taking care of John Waters mm -hmm. and that no matter what we did, we had to honor that aesthetic, and we did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is something about the darkness of Dahl and the perverseness of John Waters that cuts into a musical in just the right way. So it doesn't become synthetic and it doesn't become, you know, too soporific either. In London, we all the children were played by actual children. And in New York, we decided to have them played by funny 20-ish you know, millennials. And so they're, they're able to deliver the doll humor a lot better than an than a, a eight-year-old. Why'd 10 you make that decision to have adults play kids in this production? I because think. Because Charlie is then the only real he's so, Charlie is so sweet that when we get to the second act and he's touring the factory he kind of blended into the the wallpaper <laughs> in in London we, we, the wallpaper was so spectacular and, and and the kids so there are all these kids so now he's very he remains special and unique mm. and we, you can we, be meaner to the other kids <laughs> because they're, 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 they're adults. You can really rip, rip them apart. <laughs> you don't mind at all. Oh, you but you can't do that to a child because you, you get into the trouble. Union. Not on yes. stage. <laughs> it's hard for us to be objective anymore. But when I look at them, they are Violet Beauregard. Yes, and yes. It's Veruca Salt. I don't think of them no. as now. This should bring you to my favorite song in the show, the establishing song for the portly young man. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about me or no. Augustus Gloop? What's his name? Yes. Augustus yes. Gloop. Augustus, Augustus Gloop. Augustus Gloop. <laughs> that song is called uh, More of Him to Love. <laughs> I say so that the teleprompter lady. <laughs> <laughs> and Rose, who also it. did my makeup. <laughs> yes. We, yes, yes, you did. did. No I, she could have written theme. the lyrics on my face. <laughs> Or on Mark. Jack's face, and I can sing it right to him. Yes. Like your show, use your imagination. Yeah, You're exactly. Theater there you go. <laughs> she is the bedrock of our organization. I can feel that. Oh, you <laughs> didn't have to tell us that. She drove me down here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me think what key. So this is just his little part of it. Oh, name drop, uh, uh, side story, is we wrote the lyrics, and then Bette Midler's husband is German. Yeah. So uh, we sent him the lyrics, and I said, can you send me back phonetically how to say this with a perfect German accent, which of course I shouldn't tell you now since I'm not going to do it. Right. <laughs> but he fabulously wrote it out, and yes. so in all You're the kidding. music, yeah, 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 up until like a month ago, I said, you know, you can lose that. It's been eight years that they were still putting it in the uh, <laughs> in the piano vocal. <laughs> yeah, I'll be darned. But now I shouldn't have brought that up because I'm just going to do it as a Jewish American. <laughs> Too fast. Yeah, you are. <laughs> like my mother and my father, I enjoy a healthy meal. Yes, my outside's soft and flabby, but my inside's made of steel. We raise piggies in the backyard, then I eat them limb from limb. We move our 
dachshund all alone with him. So this morning I was eating when such hunger did attack And fifty vodka bars were waiting for a nice mid-breakfast snack But the taste was kind of different, like a brock was three days old Then I spit it out and saw I had struck gold Now I'm the perfect ticket winner for on chocolate I did tease, I'm excited, but keep eating cause I only stop to breathe And a lifetime full of chocolates, a gesundheit from above And there'll be more, more, more of me to Brilliant. I want to ask you guys, mm. when you were asked to do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it does have had already a, a great score by Bricka Sinuli, yes, Pure Imagination, right. Candyman, and all that kind of stuff. Any hesitation about writing songs that might be compared to songs that the world has known for yes. 40 years? Yes. yes, there was that, but now sure. they're in it. Yeah. <laughs> we gave up. <laughs> we gave up. Solve the, it's true. Solve the problem. It's true. So we wrote songs, and one of the favorite songs we wrote for the show, we have now cut for Broadway yeah. because it was in the place in the movie where Pure Imagination, Imagination goes. Ah. And we wanted the spot that Pure Imagination was in the show in England, it, up in the elevator at the end of the show. We really wanted that moment to... To write, you mean to write, to write, to write our write own song own and song. to write a song that was truly what's going on about with Willie and Charlie. So we, you know, put Pure Imagination back where it ought to be. And what we are proud of is that the fact that, that our score can co live and Exactly, co and that. seamlessly yes. with the new listeners. And, 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 and I think Rick I told you Leslie has been many times and, was, and, and been really, really supportive. And moved. And, and, moved and, and, and we were scared because we actually have part of his song starts, their song starts, and then we do a little of ours, then it comes back to their song, oh. and then a little of ours. So we really did a tapestry, yeah. especially, and we were kind of really scared the night he came up. And he was just, oh, he's been fabulous. He's, he's been great. great. The famous song, of course, was uh, The Candyman, right. but the song that has stuck with people really is pure imagination. Yes. yes. That's a beautiful song, and I suppose if you're... And an unusual song, too. Very, yes. And if you're going to do the show, you can't have people waiting for pure imagination. Well, we're no fools. Now the show starts with... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because, I mean, I think the three of us, we all really like to give an audience what a they good time, like. Yeah. And we don't yeah. want to disappoint an audience yeah. or to exactly. deny them. I mean, what's the point of being in show That's business? precisely what they did <laughs> yeah. the Adams Family. They couldn't figure out, where, you know, where are we going to use da 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 dum And they put it here and they put it there. And finally, they just said, show begins, yeah. da 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 dum right. boom. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you have a... Your version of that Susan said is just as good as pure imagination. Are, are you rested, oh. ready? Are you now ready to? I'm never quite rested. <laughs> it's uh, called a view. From, it's a called a, a view, view from, from here, here, and I can't do it all because it's, it becomes a big duet and it's a big power song. It's a big power. The Christian just sings his off. And, with and the, the kids. And, the, sing and this is when he's uh, when he said, uh, I, "You've Charlie, you've won you, because you, um, I'm the factory. I'm going to give you the factory." Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going up in the elevator. Here we go. When a boy like you looks to the sky At the stars and planets passing by If the boy's like me, he'll want to fly into the stratosphere and as we both rise into those skies your future will appear that's why I brought you to see the view from here just a touch of odd and he walks the streets without a nod he should know that odd is a gift from God like this starry blue chandelier and the more he lives perspective That's why I brought you to see the view from here. So you could see the straight smile. 
a challenge sailed The battlefields where good prevailed The pyramids, St. Peter's Dome The tiny house that you call home And that's as far as I can sing with my limited talents Beautiful. I, I, but now I want it to get, it, it's one of those songs oh. that it just go oh, yeah, yeah. and go goes and go and, goes. and go it's and go. Gorgeous. We, um, we um, based in, uh, sort of the idea of it from, um, you know, Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Oh, there's, yeah, a, sure. there's a beautiful, the pale blue, the pale dot. blue dot. Oh, yeah. There's a beautiful piece of writing. And so I thought, oh, this is such a nice, lovely thing to write a song about. So. And, I, and I love Odd is a gift from oh, God. God. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> it's our little, I think, we're singing to ourselves. <laughs> no. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, we're all a bit of Us Charlie, and all right? the kids yeah, like that yeah, who need that not. assurance. Yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. Jack, you've worked with these guys on a number of shows. Um, to my mind, they're, uh, you know, the best songwriting team uh, out there now. I mean, I can say no I love everybody else, but I mean, I've been fans of these guys <laughs> for a no long time. I, what, what is it like to work with them? Are they really fast? Are they collaborative? Are they divas? Are they impossible? Are they... <laughs> Well, we've gone through <laughs> all of the above <laughs> several <laughs> decades <laughs> that have borne witness to almost all of that. <laughs> all the screaming tantrum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, what is great for me at this to come through this extraordinary series of experiences and find us here happier, closer, m more delighted to be together than we've ever done before. It's complicated because I said there's this huge chapter this huge, what, iceberg underneath the surface that I had nothing to do with, right. which is how they all got there. Right. And, and I fully expected to do this with all American people, except for, the, I mean, keeping the two of them, but everybody else was supposed to be new. Well, I st stayed with Mark Thompson, the designer. British, who did yeah. both, yep, yeah, yeah. who did both the, the sets and the costumes, and the great David Grigg, who, who did the book. Uh, and I thought, they are never going to want to do what I want to do. Mm. No, why would they? Mm -hmm. And everybody wanted to come in this direction. And as a result, I don't know, maybe it was the period of time that you had yes. to think about it, that, but it just it was like cards falling together. It was just extraordinarily easy. So in other words, they're behaving on this one. Unbelievable. <laughs> and, uh, it's him it. who's not behaving. <laughs> <laughs> He's had, we've had to have this talking to. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I do want to ask you guys, did you go back to, because I'm a big doll fan, did you take most of this musical from the book or from the... the, the, the from the book. From, I, I'm going to say the from the book because, uh, and in fact, some of, we used some of his, his couplets in, in one of the songs and actual that he wrote. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I, I think I started with the book because the movie was not my Wizard of Oz. It's, a lot of people, it's their Wizard of Oz. But it it's, actually it would have been mine because yeah. I was that age. Yeah. But what, what Gene Wilder brought to the table... Yeah was a very individual kind of take that was both benign and wicked yeah. and whimsical and a little scary. Totally. And that was important to me, that, that whatever else we were doing, that, that the character that could have been malevolent should be somebody you want to follow, mm -hmm. somebody who some Pied Piper that you just find irresistible. And that's, that's Christian. Christian. That's Christian, oh. although his interpretation certainly is radically different totally. from oh, yeah. either Gene yeah. Wilder or Johnny Depp. Which it has to be. Yeah. I, mean, he, you, yeah. I mean, he's too well, good an actor to do an imitation. Yeah. I thought Johnny Depp was channeling C Carol Channing. I really <laughs> I had no idea what he was doing. If he does a remake, it'll be Bette Midler. <laughs> and and I, just, I just wanted to add one last thing. that The Oompa Loompas... You solved that problem. Pretty yeah. good, yeah. huh? Yeah. Don't give it away. Oh, that, 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 that was Basil our twist. secret. That That's was a Basil, Basil Twist. Oh, oh, he's Basil brilliant. Basil, Basil Twist. He's a genius. He's, yeah. a, he's genius. a genius. He's yeah. an actual genius. He yes, really he is. is. Oh, he's, he's the <laughs> <laughs> and has been on our show. But there you oh, go. Oh, good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. All right, can we do we have a song to? Uh, What's it what was left? You could do some Oompa Loompa. So they'll Oompa Loompa. I like him. <laughs> That's right. in the show, everyone. Right. But uh, I'm going to try to get through it. All right, but hold on one second. Don't miss Charlie in the Chocolate Factory at the Lunt Fontan Theater. Great new score by Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman. Directed brilliantly, as always, by Jack O'Brien. Thanks a lot for being our guest tonight Thank on you. Uh, Thank Theater you. Talk. Thank you.
What zigzag roads and fickle fates have led you to my chocolate gates? I'm sure, sure the stories would enthrall, but time is racing by us all. I'd love to rhyme a riddle or two, but there's so much time, so little to do. So much time, so little to do. No, strike that, reverse it, I meant the other way. It doesn't take a Sigmund Freud to see I'm charmed and overjoyed. But pardon if I start to fret, we've not begun our journey yet. No time to borrow or delay, what's here tomorrow's gone today. What's here tomorrow's gone today. No, strike that, reverse it, my tongue has feet of clay. You've bid the tasteless world and you to chew the goo awaiting you. But scurry for the wonk, clock is ticking. Inside the doors are f inside those doors, the floors are sweet. The rugs and carpets you can eat, and best of all, the wallpaper needs licking. So now the time has come at last to put the present in the past. It's time to take the golden tour and taste the tempting treats to shore. The day is young, the sun is high, and so it's time to say goodbye. No, strike that, reverse it, the next time I'll rehearse it. Get ready, set, and on your marks, let's go. On with the show. the sky, at the stars and planets passing by. If the boy's like me, he'll want to fly into the stratosphere. And as we both rise into those skies, your future That's why I brought you to see the view from here. Our thanks to the Friends of Theatre Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theatre Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theatre Talk. Thank you.